Good morning, good morning, good morning. A very special good morning to each and every one of you. I'm very, it's an awesome thing that you chose to be here this morning. And I'd also like to say a special welcome to all those of you who are joining us online this morning through Facebook. As we begin all things here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, I'm inviting you now to join me in an opening affirmative prayer. Let's go to that secret place of the Most High, where we know the indwelling God expresses in its entirety. We go within and know that this is where the divine presence dwells, infusing every cell and fiber of our being. It is absolute, the all, the within all, the, that which infuses all of life is that which now expresses as each and every one of us. It is that which is the Sunday morning message that comes this morning and expresses as this service, this gathering of consciousness, where we learn more about who we are and our divine nature and relationship with that one. And so I'm knowing that this experience is one that is enlightening, uplifting, inspiring, and which allows us to fully un understand and experience our oneness with the one. And so I give thanks for this divine energy, this coming together of like-hearted souls and I know that each one of us is very specially blessed. I give thanks for this experience as I now release my word to the law knowing that it is fully perfectly and awesomely accomplished. I give thanks that this is so and so it is. This morning friends we are I'm sharing with you a reading from the Joyous Living Journal by Petro Weldes and Christian Sorensen, and it's a reading on April 14th, and it's entitled, Prayer Made Simple. When praying, a powerful position to hold is that there is only one life, the one spirit in and through all things. When you know that there is no power apart from this one life, which is your life, then there is nothing to overcome. The power of prayer lies in the embodiment of this truth. You may believe that there could be a power apart from the infinite, and think about it. That won't make sense. But there is still no need for you to convince God of your problem prompting prayer. All you need to do is come into alignment in your knowingness of the one infinite life and feel your true essence, the part of you that has never been violated. This understanding will reveal the inherent wholeness that has been there the whole time, as easy as light dissipates the darkness to show what is already in the room. Rest in the knowingness of your true nature, which is spirit expressing until a sense of release comes and a peace settles in. Healing can be this simple. And there's a reflection from Psalm 46 verse 10 that states, be still and know that I am God. And so it is. Friends, I'm going to ask you to join me now as we sing together our praise song. And I'm going to, to invite you to stand for this. In the twinkling of an eye. On page two of your program. And it is on the screen. Um, as those of you who are watching on Facebook. <clears throat> Moment it is given in the tree. 
friends. And I'm going to light the candle for all the people of the world and the youth. I light this candle for all the youth of the world and all the people of the world. Let us together behold the Christ in each and every one of us. And so it is. And so it is. Mm -hmm. Let us say the blessing. Oh. Well, we love you. We bless, we bless you. you. We appreciate we you. you. We salute the Christ, Christ in you. you. We, we see, see you as shining, shining lights light onto your, your world. world. God is blessing us now, and so it is. Okay. And now we're going to say the prayer of our center. It's on the fly on your program. Please stand. Together. The Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ, peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our central community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God, and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever, and so it is. Please stay standing for our mission song. <clears throat> friends please be seated and now we have a few brief announcements our flowers this morning wow are a gift of love from temple treasurer Karen Gentles to mark and they are to mark the birthday of her beloved sister Sharon Thomas who had her, her birthday would have been yesterday and also the wedding anniversary of her parents. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Karen. Karen. And they were, and they were exquisitely arranged, arranged by Mrs. Judith Deer. So thank you, thank you, Karen, Karen and Judith Deer. They are absolutely wonderful. If Reverend, Reverend John were here, I know he would give the, the Latin names for these flowers. Some Sturium agarastorum or something like that. Amen. <laughs> now, we also would like to say special congratulations to Temple Teens, Kaylee Del Valley, 
Aifashani Dehaney and Kevani Palmer, who were all successful in their exams. Let's just put our hands together and big them up. Kaylee Aifashani and Kevani. Now, for our services, please join us on Facebook Live this Tuesday for our Spiritual Mind Healing Service. So this Tuesday, September 29th at 6 p.m. This week, our speaker is practitioner Vance Gardner. And also, we ask that you join us on Sunday coming, which is October 4th. If that's first Sunday in October. <clears throat> For those of us who celebrate a, a birthday in October, make sure you are here. <laughs> and um, when the, the, um, at the, on that Sunday, our speaker is Reverend John, who also celebrates a birthday in October, and assisted by Minister Reverend Anne Shand. Now, regarding services here at the temple, please remember to call into the office at 946-2230 if you are intending to attend our Sunday celebration in person. As you know, congregants attending must wear a face mask and observe the prescribed protocols. Please also remember to maintain physical distancing. I think we have done a pretty good job of doing that here and to leave the premises as quickly as possible after the service. If you can't bless us with your presence on a Sunday, you can still be with us in consciousness as our services continue to be live streamed on Facebook Live. Now, Summit 2020. I know you've been hearing a lot about it. And I mean, as the time gets closer, I am getting more and more excited because it is going to be an amazing experience and one that you are not, you don't, you must not miss. Now, we, we, we know that we've been sending out bulletins regarding um, this virtual conference. We, we were hoping to have been able to meet in one space and, and share together, but now we're going to do it virtually. And it's scheduled for October 17, 30 and 31, and November 6 and 7. And so we're going to ask, if you haven't received any of these bulletins, to call the office at 946-2230. We'll continue to send them out, but we want to make sure that we have your right email address. So if you have changed your email address over the past six months or so, please call and let us know. Now, some good news. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the um, communication platform that we'll be using, we're going to be using Zoom. So you can stay right at home and be part of this conference experience. And if you're not familiar with Zoom, on Saturday, October 10th, write this down in your diaries or put it in your smartphones. At, from 11 until 1, I will be facilitating a complimentary workshop which will help to familiarize you with Zoom. And so we ask that you email the temple at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com to indicate your interest so we can send you the link. So you can again attend this workshop at home. Okay, so we want to walk you through um, the different aspects of, of, of the platform so that you can, um, if there's any concern that you might have about doing this online, we want to ease that concern so that everyone will have an opportunity to participate. Um, this is the way the world is going. Uh, children are, are, are learning online, and um, we're just going to have to make instruments available, make connectivity available, because this is how the world is evolving, thanks to COVID-19. So the, the, the purpose of this summit is to discover in community how we might serve and thrive through our mission-driven ministry. It, 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 will be essential, it, it will be essentially a conversation about how you can help to awaken individuals and communities in and outside our center to their spiritual magnificence and create a, a Jamaica and a world that works for everyone. Um, we have a, a short video clip that we would like to share. So um, I think we have the audio here, and we, the video cl clip will be coming up for those of you who are um, participating online. So I turn it over to our These are the times, my friends. We are the people, and the Summit 2020 is the tool that can help us do it.
Hi, I'm Reverend Namaste. John Scott, pastor of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in Kingston. Greetings, friends. For the past Reverend five John Scott, years, pastor we have been engaged here in a Spiritual conversation in focused on developing For the past five years, we have been engaged here in a conversation Focused Essentially, on this church, adopted as, as part of our thriving ministry initiative, TMI for short, is one in which all stakeholders are encouraged to be supportive of and actively engaged in the accomplishment of our mission, which is to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact. As spiritual leader, I have deliberately played a largely observer role during this process, offering my support and encouragement whenever and wherever there has been a need. Nearly two years ago, when the chair of our thriving ministry council, Mrs. Lorna Phillips, propo proposed a summit designed to obtain the input of as many parties with a stake in the welfare of our church as possible, I felt that we had finally hit upon a plan of action that would not only ensure our viability and sustainability, but would provide the strategic imperatives which would form the framework of a dynamic strategic plan for our church. COVID-19 interrupted the early planning of this summit, and we paused to respond as a community to the perceived needs of our members and friends. This initiative included the live streaming of Sunday services, the formation of a circle of love, a group to call congregants, the establishment of a direct prayer line to the ministers, and the inauguration of a series of monthly webinars. What has become clear to me is the reality that the world may not ever return completely to what we were used to as a modus vivendi. Our spiritual community must determine new ways to minister to our congregants and to reach out to the world and to convey the transformative teaching of science of mind to a world that we believe needs it now more than ever. So what was originally conceived as a gathering in person will now be a virtual gathering, which we've all become accustomed to, and we are proceeding with the planning. Summit 2020 will be the largest and most important undertaking in the more than 39 year history of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. I call on all temple congregants and friends, and indeed everyone who has ever been touched in any way by their relationship with our spiritual community, to join us on October 17, 30, 31, and November 6 and 7, 2020, in the creation of a new paradigm a paradigm that will help with the charting of a new way forward for our center. In the foreword of the Science of Mind textbook, Jean Houston writes, and I quote, for the first time in human history, we are required as a species to extend ourselves into radically new ways of being. The tasks that are now ours, the tasks of virtual creation compel the revolution in consciousness that tells us that we are part of the great unfolding of spirit in flesh. End of quote. These are the times, my friends. We are the people, and the Summit 2020 is the tool that can help us do it. Namaste. That's it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Reverend John. So even when he's physically not here, he's still here. This is, this is the way of the virtual world. We are absolutely connected whether we're physical in the same space or not. Okay, so we really, really look forward to having you participate in our Summit 2020. And any questions you have, please feel free to call into the office at 946 2230. Um, speak to Reverend John or um, any one of us that you can grab a hold of. We'll be happy to um, up, 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 you know, update you on what is happening. Okay, now the Temple of Light mask. Uh, Karen, can you just stand and model yours for us, please? We have a number of Temple of Light masks that have been um, created. 
Um, oh, wonderful. It says on one side, please, um, it says, breathe with me to recognize our oneness. Ah, oh, we're getting camera coverage now. Turn and face the... Ah, there you go. Thank you very much, Karen. Okay, Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Um, that's our mask. And we still have a few available. And so uh, we ask that if you, you know, if you wish, you can maybe purchase one this morning. Um, remind me of the cost, Reverend Sonia. Say again. 700 Oh, sorry, $750. Karen, you have three for sale or you, are, you bought three? Okay, so we have one in each color. Ah, oh, okay, awesome. So we really look forward to having you support um, that effort. Now, um, this morning, John, um, Reverend John goes live on Facebook at 10.30 a.m. Uh, for discovery. And this discussion this morning is, um, regards, is regarding how we can apply science of mind principles on our, in our daily lives. And the topic is, what's on your mind? Now, with regards to prayer support, we continue to respond with prayer to the challenges uh, during this special time. If you sp wish to speak in person with one of our ministers, they, uh, they may be reached at 876-289-0907 from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight, Monday to Friday. Isn't that amazing? You can also phone in your prayer requests into our office at 876-946-2230 or you can email us at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com. You may also drop off your prayer requests, your tithes, your offerings, and set appointments for practitioner assistance. Now, if you feel moved to support our ministry of love and light, your loving gifts may be transferred to our savings account number 20941 at the Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston branch. Viewers who join us on Facebook, please visit our home tab on our Facebook page, and you'll find the link to our PayPal donate button at the top post. And if you're worshiping with us here in person, there's a basket on either side um, of the podium in which you can place your offerings as you exist, as you exit the sanctuary. <laughs> now, this concludes our announcements. And I invite you to join us now as we sing together our hymn, Why? On page three of your program, or on the screen if you're watching us on Facebook Live. So please stand. Why be filled with all the glory? Why be filled with all thy doubt? Why should we go our
It is now, it my, is now my pleasure, pleasure. To, invite to invite to the podium, to the podium our, speaker our speaker for this morning, morning delivering our message. message. I know it's going to be something that is t um, scintillating, titillating, exciting, um, thought-provoking. And so we ask that you open your minds, your hearts, and your consciousness. And welcome practitioner Je Jennifer Livingston. Jennifer. <sighs> Breathe with me. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Um, let me add my own words of welcome to all of you, and very especially to those of you sharing with us on our love stream here on Facebook Live. And I want to thank Sandy for setting the stage for this morning's service. Thank you, Sandro. You know, friends, since we have been spending a lot of time at home these past months, with many of us working from home, and I'm going to put the assistance on for the at-home workers, I have found myself spending far more time on the computer. And while there, I have come across some very interesting and useful invitations for webinars and workshops I've also signed up for a few newsletters or have been added to the mailing list from some of these webinars. Well, one such newsletter came to me recently and the article was titled, What's Your Pandemic Plan? In it, the author, who is a financial advisor, was questioning what it is that we have been intentionally focusing on, if anything, during this period which she referred to as a life transition, and one in which the whole world was going through at the same time. But as I contemplated the article and the importance of planning what it was I needed to do at this time, I recalled that for those persons on the front line or healthcare workers, an important part of their plan was to have their PPEs personal protective equipment. And I thought to myself, what's in my PPE? Which incidentally is the title of my talk this morning, what's in your PPE? The answer that came back to me in my contemplation had nothing to do with a particular form of equipment. But what was revealed was that for me, my PPE meant I should plan purposefully and efficiently, and more importantly, pray persistently but effectively to get me through these times. I want to share my thoughts with you on both of these aspects. First, by briefly identifying what purposeful planning is about while taking the time to examine what it means to pray persistently but effectively. When one talks of purposeful planning, depending on whom you're speaking with, and in the case of a financial advisor, like the article of which I referenced, purposeful planning is about having a plan as to how your finances, savings, or investments are working for you. Or you may have a plan as to how you want your estate handled so you would consult with an estate planning advisor. Or it may even be that you are reviewing your insurance portfolio, so you consult your insurance advisor. But in all of this, you have a specific plan as to how each portfolio is to be dealt with. And this, as a brief introduction, would be considered purposeful planning. It is something that all of us should take the time to review and ensure that these plans are working in our best interest. So I encourage you to seek the advice of the experts in this regard. Yet, 
even with the best laid plans and expert advisors, as spiritual mind practitioners, we never make a move without first communing with God. That infinite intelligence in prayer. For many of us, the act of praying is a daily ritual. And oftentimes, we are called to pray ongoing throughout the day just to make it through. <laughs> yes, these present times call for us to pray persistently. And we are reminded by Jesus, the master teacher, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, pray without ceasing, which metaphysically means never stop thinking affirmatively. I believe the words of this beautiful poem called ASAP, the author of which is unknown, expresses it best this way. There's work to do, deadlines to meet. You've got no time to spare, but as you hurry and scurry, always say a prayer. In the midst of family chaos, quality time is rare. Do your best, let God do the rest, and always say a prayer. It may seem like your worries are more than you can bear. Slow down, take a breath, and always say a prayer. God knows how stressful life is. He wants to ease your care, and he'll respond ASAP when you always say a prayer. My friends, the word of this poem, the words of this poem brought me to what? Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching in his book entitled Prayer, How to Pray Effectively from the Science of Mind states, and I quote, prayer is not an act of overcoming God's reluctance, but should be an active acceptance of his highest willingness. Through prayer, we recognize a spiritual law that has always existed and put ourselves in alignment with it, end quote. So no matter what it is that we are going through at this time, we must remember that there is a place in us which lies open to the infinite. But when the spirit brings its gift, it can only give to us what we take. If we look at our present circumstances then, it is difficult for us to be believe in a God who cares more for one person than it does for another. And similarly, there can be no God who is kindly disposed one day and cruel the next. Dr. Holmes goes on to state, God is a universal presence, an impersonal observer, a divine and impartial giver, forever pouring himself into his creation, end quote. Therefore, prayer must be effective because it is what enables us to establish closer contact with the fountain of wisdom, and we are less likely to be influenced by appearances around us, as stated in John 7, 24, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment, which means that we should not be phased by any manifested form, but we must judge according to the truth of things. When we pray aright, we set the law of the spirit in motion for us. Friends, prayer is essential not to the salvation of the soul, for our soul is never lost. But in our communion with the infinite, there is a vitality which is creative and which delivers to us our highest good. Dr. Holmes also states in this book on prayer, how to pray effectively from the science of mind, this conscious commingling of our thoughts with spirit is essential to the well-being of every part of us, end quote. Foremost, if not all who believe in God, we believe in prayer. That's right. 
But we must bear in mind that the prayers which are effective, no matter whose prayers they may be, they are effective because they embody certain spirit universal principles which, when understood, can be consciously used. Here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, as with all centers of spiritual living worldwide, we teach spiritual mind healing treatment or affirmative prayer. If you are not familiar with this method of praying, then, in the words of Reverend John, your assignment this week, should you choose to undertake it, is to speak with a practitioner or minister who can guide you as to how this is done, or give you a reminder if you already know how to do so. We have the tools that we can use, but we must use them effectively. Prayer is a spiritual process. As we are told in John 4 and verse 24, God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is our true spiritual power, knowing that it is the Father within that doeth the work. When we become conscious of our oneness with universal good, a belief in lack and limitation tend to disappear and we no longer ask amiss, that is, supplicating as though God were not willing to bestow our good upon us. As in the case of this woman who, as she was praying, said, so far today, God, I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, selfish, or overindulgent. I am really grateful about that, but in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed, and from then on, I'm going to need a lot more help. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> so you see, even before your feet touch the ground in the mornings, you have to be praying. In my own experience, I grew up seeing my mother doing prayers first thing in the morning and the last thing at night, and routinely throughout the day, and in particular at midday. And she was never too busy to pray. In fact, we had a plaque on the wall that said, the family that prays together stays together. I don't know how many of you remember that plaque. And so, for me, prayer is an integral part of my life. In the words of Jesus, the master teacher, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. John 15, verse 7. This is one of the important laws governing prayer, that of abiding in the one, which means we should have no consciousness separate from God consciousness. In other words, there should be nothing in our thought which denies the presence and power of God. As such, let us say this affirmation together. I'll read it once, and then you can repeat after me. I am one with the consciousness of God I'm divinely guided and directed in everything I need to do. So here goes. I am one with the consciousness of God. I'm divinely guided and directed in everything I need to do. Not convinced, so let's say it again. I am one with the consciousness of God. I am divinely guided and directed in everything I need to do. I am guided and directed in everything I need to do. And so it is. My friends, Joel Goldsmith, in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, states those who live and move and have their being in God consciousness, those who pray without ceasing, 
are the people who find that the Spirit of the Lord descends upon them, and through the Spirit of God, they are able to heal, they are able to comfort the mourner, they are able to supply the hungry, and they are able to bring joy to the sorry. He goes on to state, wherever God is entertained in consciousness, there is where the Spirit of the Lord is, end quote. To be persistent in prayer, prayer then, is to, is to continue treating and praying until, until consciousness, consciousness is changed, and from which change there inevitably follows a demonstration. If we are truly doing the work that will bring about a change in consciousness, then we can honestly ask ourselves, as Jamaican songwriter and musical entertainer, Chronic states in his 2017 song, Prayer, when was the last time you prayed? Give your thanks for health and strength. When was the last time you prayed? Ask God, protect you from the pagan. And that's a few words from this song. You can check it out on YouTube and hear the entire words. My friends, our prayer life is more than the 20 minutes we take every day to do our spiritual practice. That is our meditation, or our daily prayers. When we are praying persistently but effectively, we pay attention to our thinking and our feelings as our thought patterns constantly create our experiences. We are certain that there is an infinite intelligence in the universe to which we may tune in that will guide and direct us. If we want to ensure that we receive the answers to our prayers, then we should be doing the following. And you can make a note of this. One, approach our prayer work with diligence. That's the first thing. Secondly, affirm our unity with that consciousness that knows what to do and how to do it. Next, ask with the conviction that it is already done. And fourth, accept and allow that feeling of accomplishment to permeate your entire being. And fifth, remember that you can only get what you expect. And on that last note, last Tuesday healing service, practitioner Carol Campbell gave a talk on that topic, what do you expect? If you missed it, then make some time to go and listen to it. My friends, the Dictionary of New Thought Terms by Dr. Ernest Holmes defines prayer as silent contemplation of the divine presence ever stimulating the thought, and the universal law of mind ever acting. Prayer is the act of becoming still and knowing that God, the creative wisdom and power, is moving in, upon, and through our affairs. So what's in your PPE? As you plan, purposefully and efficiently, remember to pray persistently but effectively. Namaste. Thank you, friends. It is my pleasure now to introduce our musical item for this morning. And it's our own Yvonne Chang Oliver, who is here to bless us with her voice. Yvonne.
I walk with God from this day on. I talk with God, He understands. I pray with Him each day. God from this day on is helping hand I lead upon this is my breath my humble plea that the always with me there is no death the form may change there is no fear when I'm one with God I leave My faith is always strong. Whatever road I may walk along, I walk with God. I take His hand. I turn. With God, He understands. I pray with Him each day in Him, and He hear the words that I say. Thank you so much, Yvonne. See? So nice, we had to do it twice. Let's give Yvonne another round of applause. And now, my and friends, now my I'd friends, like to invite, invite you, invite you to, stand to stand as we say the prayer, prayer of, of Jamaica. 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 Together. Together. The radiant, the radiant light, light of, of God's, God's love. love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of our mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, 
prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established, and so it is. And I'd like to invite you to take your love offering in your hands as together we say the blessing on the envelope, and it's on the screen. Lovingly I give, joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. Thank you, Father, and so it is indeed. And so, as we come to the close of this Sunday morning celebration, we give thanks for every person who has allowed themselves to be a giver of time, of talent, and of treasure. We know that for each person within the sound of my voice and those tuned into this service this morning, that truly they have been inspired, uplifted, and blessed. So as we go forth from this sanctuary this morning to our respective destinations, we take with us this consciousness of love, of joy, and of peace. And we know that as we go through the week this week, we pray persistently but effectively. And so we know that every desire of our hearts are now being fulfilled in and before we ask. We give thanks for this teaching. We give thanks for each other. And we continue to be a beacon of light unto our world. And feeling the fullness of faith, I release this word to that infinite law of mind which has already made it so. Thank you, God, that this is so now. And so it is. And please join me in the singing of our peace song, Yes, There is Peace on Earth, and it's on the screen for those of you who's watching. Remember to join us this Tuesday for our healing service with practitioner Vance Gardner and also our Sunday morning service with Reverend John Scott next Sunday, October 4th. And if you have been moved by this service, please remember to give a love offering to our account at the Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston branch, account number 20941. Thank you for being with us this morning and have a wonderful week. Namaste.